Hi, Faye, how are you? I'm wonderful. You're a highlight whenever I get together and, 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 and we explore I'm in the world of wine. I can't tell you how excited I've been to get together today, especially because you're taking us to one of my top go-to destinations that I personally been dying to go to. So I'm excited we're going to Portugal today and you have an amazing special guest. Yes, well, uh, I'm, I'm happy to introduce uh, a friend of mine, uh, George Moreira, who is uh, one of the top analogists and winemakers in the Douro region of Portugal. Uh, he, has, he makes unbelievable wines. He is the uh, head analogist for Real Compania Vela, which is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, uh, uh, wineries in uh, Douro. Also Quinta de la Rosa, and he also has his own winery, um, Quinta do Coera, which I sell. Uh, Coera, and uh, his wines are fantastic. He's a fantastic guy. He's also a, 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 a an athlete. He does triathlons <laughs> and runs all over. He's in great shape. So uh, I'd like to say hello to George and uh, have him uh, tell us a little bit about his winery and uh, and his wines. Welcome, George. Oh, thank you very much. Hello. It's a big pleasure to be here to talk a little bit about Portugal and more special about Douro. Uh, it's, of course, is uh, something that I'm really passionate about. It's uh, it's a very well known region for port wine for some centuries, but uh, what we are going to talk more today is something that is new: is the red and white Douro wines, not fortified. I think we 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 live in a very special area. We we live in a place full of mountains and rivers, so our viticulture is from mount, mountains. We have more than a hundred different grape varieties that make us really special, varieties that you can only find in Portugal that are very well adapted to our very difficult conditions of uh, wine growing. So our soils are very poor, it's very hot, almost no rain. Some places of Douro, we have as much as rain as in Sahara Desert. So smooth, desertic climate. So our grapes really suffer, but uh, in the middle of this, all this suffering, we make beautiful, aromatic, long, and wines that age very, very, very well. So I think we, we are very lucky that they can work and make wines in a very special uh, place in the world. George, can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, it's, it's for a lot of people that don't realize that Portugal has so many incredible indigenous grapes. Can you tell us what, like, for example, like one of the average blends would have of, of from Portugal. Yeah, you, when you when we 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 work mainly with old vineyards, and in the old vineyards in, in Portugal, uh, it was used to plant uh, field blends, so 20, 30, 40 different grape varieties. Wow! So with this, we, we achieve two things: we have great complexity. But uh, most of all, uh, we, did, uh, we diminish the, the risk. So if some year is not good for early ripening grapes, we have in the same vineyard uh, grapes that uh, ripe a little late. Some that are very sensitive to water. So if we have a, a wet vintage, we have other uh, vines that will perform very well. So in the middle of this, we create more than 100 different grape varieties like Toriga Nacional, Toriga Franca, Solzão, Bastardo, Rufet, Francisca. So I can go on and on. Oh. Well, what, what's unique is, is that a lot of people, when you, when you say the grapes from Portugal, it doesn't even compute in their mind uh, the grapes at all because they just are so, un, they're, they're not familiar with the names even, like Toriga Nacional. When I say that to people, they go, is that Cabernet Sauvignon? And I go, no, it's a, it's a grape that grows only in Portugal. And now they grow it in other places, but indigenous to Portugal. But they, they don't get it at first. And then when they, when they start to get it and they try, especially the Tariga Nacional, which is one of my favorite varietals of all time. I just love it. And I think any kind of person that's into more of an elegant, uh, full-bodied style, you know, would love Tariga Nacional. But there's so many amazing indigenous Portuguese grapes that for such a small country, it's almost uh, mind boggling, you know? But, but it's also the complexity of the grapes and you were saying before, but I mean, before this, before right now, I had no idea that there was such a vast array, but it sounds so exquisite from one grape to the next to the next. It just, it sounds amazing. And I had no idea. I'm literally, which never happens at a loss for words. It's pretty amazing. 
Uh, most, uh, people, most people don't know Portuguese wines, and that's why George, I think, is a pioneer of making some unbelievable wines. And hopefully, uh, as the future goes, we can get the word out because if you're a wine, if you're into wine in general, whether it's everyday wine or even collecting, I think Portugal is one of the top countries in the world right now. You have to focus on. But George, uh, I, I want you to continue to explain. But it's just even from uh, just to a beginning, like an intro is the different variety of grapes, which then creates this exquisite collection of wines. It's from the grapes. So please okay. continue. So right. it's a viticulture vineyard. So in the same vineyard, you can have a difference in altitude of, for instance, 400 meters. That can make a huge difference. The difference in expositions also make a great, great difference. But only the grape varieties can, it's a, it's a game changer. So for instance, let's speak to, we have Turiga Nacional, as Anthony said, makes very concentrated wines, you know, dark in color, big structure, big tannins, you know, ripe fruit, but with the floral and the citrus uh, scent that makes it very fresh, very long, makes this very elegant, big, big, big wines that age for, for decades. But in the same vineyard, you can have, next to this one, you can have, for instance, Bastarda. And Bastarda is the opposite. No color, very subtle tannins, very elegant, almost like a Pinot Noir. So in the same, in the same place, you can make two completely different wines. You can make a, a powerful, full-bodied wine, or you can make a very light, intense, but refreshing and fresh wine at the same time. And this just playing with different grape varieties. And this is also what is something that Mother Nature has provided, like such a gift and blessing within the region there that yeah. I, I had no idea. I'm like, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> and the, and, the, and the, it's incredible because it's uh, grape varieties that are in our, uh, our land for centuries. And when you take some, for instance, Anthony uh, spoke about Cabernet Sauvignon. If you put Cabernet Sauvignon in, uh, in uh, our vineyards and we try it, it doesn't work well. It's too hot, it's, uh, it's too much. You know, if you, you put Sauvignon Blanc and we have a little bit in high altitude, very fresh place, it's too much. So it's grape varieties that are so well adapted of the suffering that you have in those. Schistus, very rocky soil, that, uh, that creates this wonderful different flavors and taste that you can find anywhere in the world with such a, a diversity and uh, uh, so well adapted that it's really incredible. Wow, and and like if you have to choose like or the top collection of varieties that so someone says you know what I I'm dying, I'm dying to try these wines. Where does someone begin? Like you know where do you begin? I think you should start with Torriga Nacional. So uh, Torriga Nacional is the, the grape variety that has more character, more identity. It's, you know it's like Cabernet Sauvignon. You taste, you put the, the glass in your nose, and you immediately say, oh, this is Cabernet. Wow. But then. You feel the nuance and the, the quality, and the, you can have a great Cabernet or a, an average wine. And with Torriga Nacional, it's the same. You smell it and you immediately see that it's Torriga Nacional, but then there's different levels of quality of the Torriga Nacional. Then the sister of Torriga Nacional, that is Torriga Franca, it's also a great, uh, great variety, but also to make very full bodied wines, that is really important to make port wine. But and uh, then you have Tinta Roriz, that is Tempranillo uh, in Spain. We have a very, very special grape variety that is called Red Dog. Very, very, very small red berries that needs a lot of heat to ripe, but at the same time, it's very sensitive to water stress. So it's a very difficult grape to, to get it right with the phenolic ripeness, but when it's, uh, when it's good, it's incredible. So exotic. So different that is really incredible. See, that sounds something more than I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying to try. Because it's like, after all that, and in the, the way that it is made and created, right? And the whole and the whole way, the whole process. And then the finale is just amazing, right? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, George, is, George is really, I think, uh, and you correct me, George, he's like, uh, uh, basically the winemaker now, if they're making wines of passion not just commercial wines is really an art that's what anybody, I'm anybody can grow grapes and, and try to make wine but like george was saying whether it's knowing the uh, having the knowledge to know what grape needs a certain amount of water or where to plant it 
or when to pick it. That's where the art form comes in and that's where the top analogy does. Well, that's all of this. Like, George, everything you're explaining, I mean, you're explaining, listen, because I, you know how they say our surroundings greatly affect everything. The environment that's surrounding there produces these amazing grapes and it sounds like I, I would just like, like a breakdown, I'd like to read off like every single grape, but then you're, the finale and the art of, of what you're doing with these grapes, you're creating a just, it's like a perfection. It's a symphony that comes together and you create a perfection in a bottle of wine. Yeah, we, we try to do it, you know. Yeah. We, we, they, many, many, I make many, many different wines. I make more than 60 different wines every year. And many people ask me, how, how it's possible for you to add imagination to create uh, so many different wines? And uh, I try to explain that it's not a question of imagination. It's a question of going to the vineyards and try to understand that tasting some grapes, the kind of wine that is in these grapes. And how can I help this, this grape to express the best way? And this could be in a full-bodied, concentrated wine, or can be a very light and fresh and elegant uh, wine also. I mean, uh, and the, uh, now, here's from the white wines, correct, like that you produce, that you, that you create, and then is there like a, a summer, like a lighter version, because everyone's thinking about, I want to go out, I want to enjoy the perfect bottle, the perfect glass of wine, something that's, you know what, and I'm sure it's not just one. I'm sure you had like a few, you know, but now it's a hot thing in the summer. Everybody loves that perfect glass of wine just to sit outside and enjoy life. And we have a lot to celebrate for. What do you, what do you recommend? What do you think? You know, in Dodo we do everything. We do uh, from sparkling wine, very light, aromatic, muscat uh, style of wines. We make, we make concentrated whites, uh, light reds, concentrated reds, uh, sauternes-like wines. So, you, you know, Douro is immense wine region. It's really big. And uh, with all this diversity of altitudes, and expositions and climates, and with all these great varieties, we can make everything. Now, what we are loving for the... the the, the summer is a, a wine that we made from a grape variety that is called Rufet. It's a very exotic and strange grape variety that it's a red, that, but you can serve it shield. So the tannins are so soft that you can serve it really shield. So it's a perfect uh, wine for a barbecue at lunch in a, in a terrace or something like that. You just described like the perfect bottle of wine that I was, I'm like, I'm dying to try it because especially like even when I go to Greece sometimes and I like a, like a nice wine, you can't chill a lot of the red wines. So now yeah. I'm like, you just, I, it's like perfect. It ruins the wine. This is like perfect for me, especially. I, I don't know if George, I, I, I know, I don't know the quantity of white wine George makes. I know he doesn't make a lot of it, but the white wines that I've had from uh, George have oh, been spectacular. Like, I'm like, they're, they're just so good. You know, hopefully we can bring some here in the future. But, uh, you know, what I wanted to uh, uh, ask George just to explain a little bit about is, you know, we have one of, we have the dusty wine that we sell from his personal winery and it's pretty incredible. So that's the, this is the Reserva, which is the age one, which is pretty spectacular. And I wanted him just to maybe explain a little bit about this, you know. So well, this, this uh, for me is really a very special wine. It was a pioneer in Douro in a different style of wine that uh, we start making because when we start making Douro reds, we, we took what we learned from vintage port and translated it to, to wine. And uh, things didn't work so well because for vintage port you need overripe grapes, you need a lot of concentration because it's a wine that has 100 grams of sugar, 20% of alcohol, so the balance is completely different. So what I try to do is to go to the best vineyards that we have in, in Douro, in Pignon Valley. It's a very hot valley where we have for centuries produced the best grapes to make the best wines that live for 100 years. And we can open the bottles and taste it and see. Uh, but with a different nuance. It's a vineyard that is completely north facing. So for us, this means that it's in a slope that never have direct sunlight in the afternoon. So what this makes is we can produce wines with deep ripeness, but keeping all the acids and all the freshness. So we have a Douro wine with all the structure 
all the full body that we can get from these old vineyards in Pinon Valley in these very difficult concentrations, uh, different co difficult conditions where we get all this concentration. But at the same time, because we don't have the 50 degrees Celsius in the afternoon of sun the, in the vineyards, we have very slow ripening, very slow maturation, keeping all the, the, the fruit flavors and all the acids. So we have a very fresh, uh, and intense uh, voter right. I mean, it, it, it sounds, it, no, it sounds like the perfect bottle, the perfect glass of wine. I mean, what is your, Anthony, you have to unmute your mic, unmute your mic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what I was saying is that the regular, he has the regular Dusty, which is, uh, you know, more of an everyday wine blend, delicious. And then the, uh, the reserve is also the blend, but it's, it's, uh, it's it's just, it's unbelievable. So it's, you'll, it's you'll made, get a chance to try. <laughs> it's made with uh, more than 20 different grape varieties from old vineyards. Everything mixed together, made in stone lagage, foot trod, uh, trod and, uh, and that's it. When you say the it's made in the, in the stone, it's made in what, the, like the concrete? The, the, the vinification tank, it's a, it's a, a lagar in stone. Uh, that we go inside and we crush the, the grapes with the feet, very gentle, like uh, you used to do in the Roman times. And then we use a, a very a vertical press, a very old vertical press. We press it, so we make this wine, you know, the easiest, uh, the most simple way that, that we can make. You know, I'm a winemaker that uses drones and all technology to, to make other wines. But to make these wines that are really a clear expression of our land, of our soils, of our terroir, we make minimal interventions. So we make it as simple as it's possible. But it's it's just pick the grapes, put in stone lagage, go inside with the feed, let the fermentation happen, press it with a very old vertical press, put it in barrels, let it age, and that's it. But it's a centuries-old technique that has, even its, its simplicity, has been perfected, and it's a formula that you've kept even till today. It's true, and it's very simple, but there's a lot of details, and these details makes the difference between making some normal wine or really spectacular wine. No, I, I mean it's it just sounds exquisite. I I'm dying to go and just see and watch like the whole Please thing. Come. It's a, you are more than welcome. <laughs> everyone I know has fallen in love with Portugal. Me, today, I've fallen in love with the grapes and the wines. I mm -hmm. literally, I, I could taste it almost like when you're describing it and going through it, which is like pretty amazing. It's something that I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's such a blessing that, you know, to have you today and also to explore these type of things because it, it truly is the art of wine. It sounds like from everything we've gone over today. Oh, it's pretty, really... Yeah. It's really a magical place for any wine lover, uh, to anybody that loves nature, you know, little, people that likes good food, good wine, good company. We are very friendly people in Portugal, so it's a, it's a place to come. I, I have to ask you because now it's, it's like you read my mind. So now mm. I have this exquisite bottle of wine, bottles of wine. What mm. is your favorite dish or dish or something that you love to pair it up with? The, I, I like I like the baby lamb. Uh, we have a very special cows here that you just put it a simple grilled grilled. It's the, the perfect uh, food for this wine because we need some intense flavors because the wine is intense. We need some some grass because we have fresh tannins and fresh acidity. So these two together go really well. And me personally, and I'm so happy, and I would love to enjoy a glass with both of you. I just need good company, and then mm -hmm. I'm okay with everything else. No, you know, good cheese that we really also have. That was uh, my next thing. It's it's uh, more than enough, and we, you know, we have something else that is really really good. We it's almonds that we roast it in the oven and we season it with uh, with some pepper and salt, and it's it's great. No. It's delicious. No, but it's funny because, and everyone thinks I'm, you know, I've never tried it. I love pairing with my wine sometimes, mm -hmm. like a, like a, like a, I guess the roasted nut with some mm -hmm. cheese, which yeah. is like people never think, but that's yeah. amazing just to have that. Cause sometimes you want to simply enjoy that perfect glass of wine 
and you don't want to overpower it. Sometimes people make the mistake of overpowering with too many foods, too, which takes away from that flavor, from that perfection of that glass of wine. Correct? That's it. For instance, every time I drink a, a glass of towny port, it's always only with some old almonds or some dry fruits. That's more right. than enough. I mean, I don't know. I can't stress this enough. I'm, I, how excited I was just today. Now I'm even ecstatic more, I have to say. I went from excited to ecstatic because it, I, to have explored the art of wine that you have perfected, you know, I mean, it's, it's truly unbelievable. And also you got to bring us into the region, which people don't understand how much Portugal has to offer. And it's unusual that you see in one place that it offers so much. Yeah. You have huge diversity and you, you can experience a little bit of everything. And we are very close to a city that is Porto, that is near the sea, there's where the, the plane goes, where we have the airport, and it's a very old town and also one of the most beautiful cities in the world. So you can go to Porto, stay one night there, and then travel to Douro, spend two or three days traveling the, the wine country, go back to Porto or Guimarães. So we have so much to offer because, you know, Portugal is very small, so it's very easy to travel around, but we have huge diversity. So all cities are very old history. We are a very old country. So we have these castles and all these museums and beautiful things to see. And it's one hour drive, everything. So it's very, very close. So we can have a very diverse experience without moving a lot. Well, I, I mean, I will say until then, the best way to get a truly exquisite taste of Portugal is with the bottle of wine that you that the different variety collection of wine that they can try today, but especially the one we were just talking about before is, and Anthony, they're able to get that. If somebody wants to have that taste of Portugal. We, we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, it, we don't, uh, he doesn't produce a, t a lot of it. So it's in certain retail stores. So if anybody ever wants something, they can always contact me and I can send them to the specific retail store that carries it. And uh, as far as that goes, and. I, I encourage everybody to look up uh, George's name on the internet and read about him a little bit and read about what he does. Uh, um, yeah, he's definitely uh, uh, a pioneer and an amazing um, uh, figure for Doro. And it's uh, definitely, George would like to, if he has a website or any kind of um, thing that he would like to uh, tell about, that would be great also, you know? Yeah, George, my, my wife said he's- How can he talk uh, with you, you know? How can people get in touch? They wanna get in touch. They want to find out more. They want to book their trip. They want your advice. They want to know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very easy to contact me through Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Or by email, you can mail me at puera, at puera.pt. And it's very easy. I have a website, but it's under construction. So it's not working so well. It's under construction for the last five or six years. <laughs> so <laughs> You're busy making great wine. That's OK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but it's, you know, it's very, very easy to find my, my contact and you contact me and uh, I'll be happy to, to help. So I work in many, very different uh, wineries. Some of them receive people at the places where you can stay and you can eat so I can try to, to help organize the trip. So, George, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, today, like I said, I'm sure everyone's going to start falling in love today with Portugal. They're mm -hmm. going to want to reconnect with you. So maybe you can join us back. We can talk more about the wineries, uh, uh, Portugal, and everything. Yeah. The, ne the next time we're going to film this in Portugal. Yeah. Uh, the next time I will be on that plane, I will be ready. I'm in, right now, I'm, I'm just ready to have that taste. And then the next time, yes, we're getting on the airplane and we're coming to visit you in person, George, and do a whole feature there. Yeah, can in September. That is vintage time. The weather is beautiful. Everything, everybody is happy picking the grapes <laughs> and making parties all the time. So it's the best place to, right. best time to come to Doro. So, uh, I have to thank you uh, both. I mean, today was tr truly exquisite. It was, I'm ecstatic. It was wonderful. Thank you both today. It was Thank wonderful to explore much. Portugal and the world, but the art of wine with you today. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, George. And I hope to see you soon in Portugal. Yes, I'm ready. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. you, George. Take care. Thank you, Anthony. You too. We'll talk soon.